Hello. Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. Pacific yeah, Rim. The, the new Pacific Guillermo Rim. del Toro. What did you he call him? It's Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo. Okay, that's how you pronounce it. All right. That is how you pronounce it. I pronounce it. it Guillermo because I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I can. I don't know. I mean, you could be right. I'm not really sure. I've always heard it pronounced Guillermo. I, I just call him Uncle Guillermo. So. Yeah. Well, he's very cuddly. Yeah. He made a film with balls. Like he was, he was so ballsy to take on this thing. I've heard it's very good. I've heard it's a, a very entertaining summer blockbuster. I've heard people are like, I heard it was crap, and I'm like, I don't know who you've been talking to. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, no, I've heard it's really good. I mean, to be honest, it would be hard. I would be hard pushed not to enjoy one of his films. I really warm it's, to him. The anime people, like, this is the closest we're going to get to an Evangelion movie. So just see it because you're never going to get an Evangelion movie. We've been so close to getting a Neon Genesis Evangelion movie, but they're like, eh, probably not going to do big here. I'm like, well, you know. We've tried so, we've tried live action anime movies in the past, and we got Dragon Ball Evolution, and uh, Avatar yeah. or, or the Last Airbender. Technically not anime, but still the Last Airbender. Last Airbender, the movie looked like a piece of shit. I couldn't believe it. I've heard very very good things about the series. Um, my dad really likes it. So Pacific Rim is kind of anime style then. It's very like, it's if like like. There's a lot that they take from anime, but it, they also take a lot from, like, giant monster movies from the 70s in Japan with Godzilla and, you know. But they also take a lot from, you know, just giant robot cartoons in general, like Voltron. and. Well, it kind of seems like the thinking man's Transformers, you know, the thinking man's summer blockbuster. What, what I liked about the movie is in the first, like, three minutes, they have a narration where they basically explain everything. Like, okay, here we are in present day. This giant portal opens up in the Pacific Ocean. No one knows where the fuck it came from, but all these aliens... Well, one alien, one giant alien just started coming out, and they're like, okay, well, let's beat it. And then another one came, and we're like, okay, well, this is going to be a problem. So all the countries got together, and... Great, what was... The narration in the film as inarticulate as you are being no, right. No, it was way better. But all the all the countries like put aside their differences and all their governments started funding building giant robots that can be piloted by two people who can mind meld. And it's like I'm like, what? <laughs> it's so fucking good. Like and it's just action all the time. There's no bullshit. They insert dialogue for the characters you give a shit about. There's no, there's no bullshit, man. It's just action. Yeah, there's no bullshit. There's really not. Because the only pieces of dialogue that they put in there, and the only pieces of plot, are the are the plot and the dialogue from the characters that you give a shit about. Well, that's good. Which is a lot that's- of them. You actually give a shit about Charlie Day, and Charlie Day plays a scientist. The guy from Always Sunny plays a scientist yeah. with tattoos. I- He's also in Monsters University, and he is fucking hilarious in and, that, but we'll see later. And his, like, his, his, the guy he works next to is, like, this really lanky, hunched-over, older British dude that speaks the Queen's English. So that like, kind of comedic duo. And he actually says, by Jove. Oh, for fuck's sake. No. <laughs> even be offended though because it's Guillermo del Toro it's Guillermo del Toro. stereotype but it's the best stereotype. Yeah I mean you know once you've had like Cronin in um no not Cronin who am I thinking of who's the guy in Hellboy 2 played by Seth MacFarlane the huge German stereotype. I do not know. Speaking, I love the Hellboy. Speaking of Hellboy movie. Ron Perlman is also in the movie. Really I love Ron Perlman. He looks like um him. He looks like uh he almost looks like Will Ferrell and Zoolander. Mm. <laughs> see that? I know exactly what you that doesn't kind of surprise me. I can really see what you're saying. I think he's a very handsome man. He's like this really over the top looking like black market leader or something like that. But in like 
but and the thing about the British stereotype scientist guy, he's like actually like there the, like the stereotypes he has aren't negative, but he himself is a negative character. Like you do not give a shit about him. He's like this is never going to work because Charlie Day is trying to mind meld with like pieces of the monster that they have so he can find out where the portal is in the Pacific Ocean. And I think it's brilliant that they put it in the Pacific Ocean, by the way, because there's so much about the depths of the Pacific Ocean that we just don't fucking know about because humans can't physically get down there and science has not come up with a way to find out what the fuck is down there. Okay, There could be giant monster portals down there. We just don't know it yet. (laughs) I think it's almost certain that there are, Greer. Yeah, and... uh, That conclusion. And... What I liked about it is, like, there is romantic subtext with, like, the main character and this really hot Asian girl, but, like, they never kiss in the movie. Spoilers, they never kiss in the movie. But... Oh, that's... Yeah, it's cool. I mean, the romance doesn't have to be the fun. Yeah, I, I feel like it wasn't. I think their relationship as, you know, the pilots and how they have to mind meld, I, I feel like they put that at the forefront instead of them being, you know... They, they care about each other. I feel like they care about each other, but not in a romantic way. I have heard it has a really, really good female protagonist. A really, like, good, strong... Yeah, the Asian girl is yeah. really good. I don't know her name. I don't know if she's, like, famous and She's Japanese. I know she's Japanese. I don't know if she's famous in Japan, but she was really good. And she was really what? cute. I will definitely see it you've piqued my interest yeah Um, it's pretty badass and they're i've heard nothing but good things and it's all like original like yeah it's based off of a bunch of resources you know like robot anime like evangelion and you know giant Mm -hmm. kaiju monsters from japan (laughs) but you know it's basically the best movie ever I am really excited about um, Saving Mr. Banks. Oh, the one about Walt Disney? Tom Hanks playing Walt Disney is, like, the best casting I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, did we talk about this last week? No. We We weren't here last week. Were we not? No. I'm fucking crap, (laughs) aren't I? I can't keep up with anything. Um... No, I will. No, I am incredibly excited about it. I saw the trailer and I felt like explain a what it bit, is. Explain what it is. Saving Saving Mr. Banks is the story of P. L. Travers deciding whether to give Walt Disney the rights to make Mary Poppins. So you get to see all this kind of. I mean, the the thing about her, you know, not kind of trusting Walt Disney to do it properly, and her fear that he'll kind of make it, you know, very twinkly and sentimental when actually she kind of holds it quite close to her heart and aspects of it, like the nanny character, are very true to her growing up. Um, But it's got... What I loved about the trailer was that it did have this really twinkly, magical quality, and I remember watching it, and, like, you'd sort of be like, oh, oh, look, look, those are the, um, those are the Sherman brothers, and, like... Oh, that's Tom Hanks as Walt Disney. It's so perfect. And oh, I can hear Supercalifragilistic being played for the first time. And it was like, I was like a little kid. I was excited. So I was ad- is this based off a book? Like, did someone who was there write know. this? And like, this is how it allegedly happened? Like, is this uh, based off true events? Uh, well, yeah, okay. yeah, it is. It is. Um, I don't know whether it's based off a book, but it is based off true events. But it has, it's, it's based on the story of how Mary Poppins got made, but it is just, it does have a very kind of twinkly, evanescent, magical quality, certainly on the basis of the trailer. I was really like, I remember Millie saying um, that it gave her the chills or something to that effect and that a trailer hasn't done that for her in a long time. And I felt exactly the same way. I was really, really excited. And I think I'm really reassured by the fact that it's called Saving Mr. Banks, because I think clearly they understand what the kind of heart and soul of Mary Poppins is, and that is the Mr. Banks character Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. his kind of arc. And I think that's a very mature reading of it. And it's it's really reassuring that that is something that they're going to focus on. 
so yeah i'm really really excited have you seen the trailer oh yeah my favorite line in the trailer is when that guy is like dick van dyke and emma thompson's like no <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair to be fair if you were pl travers um and you heard that dick van dyke was going to play that part mary poppins is that how you <laughs> yeah that's how you guys talk that's, uh, oh yeah oh yeah he's he's right on the money there um no i mean it's one of the worst cockney accents i've ever heard but apparently <laughs> drunk for the majority of the filming I so love it. i love it it's I, great I, love, I mean mary poppins i think is the greatest film of its type ever made makes me wonder if julie andrews is gonna have a cameo um julie andrews mm-hmm. isn't doing anything right now I mean, uh, no, I don't think she is. The only thing I know, I know, um, I know who's playing Julie Andrews in it. Really? Yeah. Let me quickly find out so we can see whether she looks right. Um, but uh, I, I have hope because this might actually be a Disney movie that my mom might actually want to see. Like, because there are all yeah. these animated movies that she's just not interested in, and I hear you. I'm always trying to get my mom and dad to go and see. Um, going to see Pixar films with me um, and new Disney films, and they're just not into it. They've got a real um, aversion. Yeah, I really so I, I really wanted my mom to see Brave, but she never did, so... I think some of these movies are better than their adult counterparts. I mean, obviously some of them are crap, but some of them are brilliant, and it would be a shame not to give them a chance just because technically they're made for kids. I mean, all that really means... For all that should mean is that they don't have any sex or swearing or violence. Yeah. But that doesn't equate them being immature, you know? I mean, like Up, for instance, I think, you know, has a lot of very adult ideas in it. So someone named uh, Victoria Summer is playing Julie Andrew- young Julie Andrews in the movie. And she actually yeah. she actually looks a little bit like her, I guess. Like yeah. Mary Poppins, you know. Yeah, she's got that look, hasn't she? She's quite kind of, um, I don't know, she's very kind of classically beautiful. Yeah, she looks I... like classic Hollywood almost. Yeah. Which yeah, is, she's... you know, Mary Poppins was made in, when was Mary Poppins made? Like the 60s? Like 1963 yeah. or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, I really rate Mary Poppins, so I'm very, very fucking excited about this. And Mary it just Poppins, looks... like a real, like, is... Is that do they you guys have like a day where everybody in England just watches Mary Poppins? Uh, no, but it is always on at Christmas. Really? Yeah. That's a bit like Sound of Music. Sound of Music's always on at Christmas. Sound of Music for us is always on near like Easter. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I th- I think there are there are certain movies like that that they just are made for the holidays. I never see Mary Poppins at Christmas, but I do. Now that I think about it, yes, yeah, Sound of Music does come on during Christmas for some reason. I don't, I don't think there's a Christmas scene in Sound of Music. It just had that festive, magical quality. I don't think, th- I don't think there's a Christmas scene in Mary Poppins either. Is there? No. But you know what I'm saying, don't you? They just are. Kind of, Christmas- yeah. Like you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have Aladdin on TV at any other time but Christmas. You wouldn't have. Monsters Inc. on TV at any other time but Christmas or Easter or, you know, most of the time the movies that actually get shown on TV are crap. Yeah, except Sharknado. Oh, except Sharknado. Except oh, I'm sorry. Sharknado. Um, that brings us. Can very... we talk about Sharknado for just like five seconds? Uh, well, it was Cory Monteith's last. It was the last thing he tweeted about. That is, for me, that is why he's going to go down in history, in my book. This is the last... What a way to leave Twitter, by the way. Tweeting about yeah. Sharknado. I agree, I agree. God bless him. God I, you bless know, you. God bless you, Mr. Monteith. It's, no, it's obviously incredibly sad, but, you know, there's... I suppose there's not much we can... There's not much we can add. I think everyone in general is just sad. The Sharknado. <laughs> I want to move away from the depressing topic because I am depressed about that. So I'm I gotta move to Sharknado, <laughs> which just mulling it over. Sharknado looks fucking hilarious. It, um, I it is. When it's you haven't seen hit. it? No. Jesus Christ, that has to be taken <laughs> care of. Is it as mad as Snakes on a Plane? Yes. 
Snakes on a Love- Plane is tame compared to this movie. Jesus. Well, I suppose snakes on a plane versus sharks in a tornado. And tornado yeah, I mean, made of sharks, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's basically I, what it is. It's. I mean, some people are calling it like a tornado with sharks in it, but I'm like, no, these sharks made this tornado and are now a part of this tornado. Are they? My question to you is: Is there a supernatural element, or were oh. the sh- just caught in the tornado. When you said supernatural element, I'm like, what, did you think Jensen Ackles was going to be in this movie? Oh, but, no, but, uh, yeah. no, it just happened. It just happened. There, yeah. there might have been an explanation, but I was probably, like, cackling through it, like, and missed it, because the dialogue is so bad. Is that any semblance of a plot? I mean... There are these people, and some guy owns a restaurant, and Tara Reid is in it, too, and, um... Free, yo, what a surprise. Uh, and they're just kind of running in front... I think the the guy that owns the restaurant has, like, a div- Like, he's divorced, and he's wants his kids and his ex-wife to be okay, or something like... I have no fucking clue. I was... T- the plot is so shitty, but I was just... The whole time, I was just like, just, I want to see the fucking shark. Stop talking. Give me the fucking sharks, you know? I do. I mean, I know what you mean, but I do think the plots in those things, as stupid as they are, are always therefore hilarious. Like, it's really funny to have some hammy, terrible actor pacing up and down an office, taking the idea of a Sharknado really seriously. That, to me, is just as funny as the Sharknado itself. Oh, yeah, definitely. I really want to see it. I just, I, don't... I really do hope, like, the sh- that's, like, sad to think about, that, like, maybe, like, some of the people that worked on this, like, actually think that people love it for a serious reason. Oh, I'm sure they don't. There's just no well, way you I'm, could. I'm, it's sad to just think about maybe that one guy, that one, like, assistant director oh, or something. Oh, well, I suppose just somebody entering the industry for the first time. If this was your first project, you would be proud of it. Regardless of how shitty it was, you would be proud of it. But no, uh, Sharknado, it, it has been playing on sci-fi, like, every day. And, like, I'll, I think it's down to, like, every other day now. They're just replaying it over and over. Seriously, every other day? Like, around that. Like, it was on sometime yesterday. I caught the last ten minutes of it or something. That's insane. Sci-fi oh, channel. That's... Well, technically, it's not even a sci-fi production. Asylum put this one out. Not this a, is an not... Asylum movie. Yeah, that it's an Asylum movie. Re- review it? Huh. Review it is what I meant to say. Probably. Probably. Somewhere down the line. I can imagine it's... Um, I can imagine there's going to be a lot of call for it. For reviewing? On I think so. Channel Awesome, yeah. Uh... I mean, but what it, it has, it's going to have to be like a big crossover because it's like a big movie, like, and everybody's already talked about it. So somebody's going to have to do something special and big or something about it or something. Well, there are so many cons coming up. I'm looking forward to seeing whatever crossovers um, come of that. Yeah, either Com, Com Bravo is going to be huge, man. Com Bravo is next week. Well, I can't believe that Doug. Um, Doug, the nostalgia critic Walker, is going to be at a British con this year. That's got to be a first. Are you still going to go? Like, are you really still dead set on going? Um, when is it again? In August or September? Something like. I don't. You posted it. I know I did, but I I can't remember. It's Alcon. Got... I don't know. <laughs> Alcon. Well, let me. Okay, I can officially announce for people for anyone that does want to go that it is on. In I know how much it costs. Because that sadly is going to I looked it up, and you can just fucking get, an, like, a train that only takes, it only takes an hour to get there. You don't even have to get a hotel room. You could just take the train back home every night if you wanted to. Yeah, but it's like 40 quid a ticket. Eh. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Right. An adult ticket for the whole weekend is £85. Okay. A Saturday ticket. I'm acting is, like I I'm I'm acting like I can do like pound to dollar conversion in my head, but I really can't. Okay, well it's more than dollars. Okay. I think yes, it is. Yeah. 
So an adult ticket is £85, um, a Saturday adult ticket is £42, and a Sunday adult ticket is the same. Um, but it is on, if people by some stroke of luck can afford that, um, between the 9th and 11th of August. So put that in your diaries. And Doug... Who's Matthew- going to be there, Fran? If you would let me finish... <laughs> I was trying to do, like, a big introduction. You'd be like, who's going to oh. be their friend? And you'd be like, well... <laughs> angry. Sorry, I wasn't playing along there, was I? <laughs> you got angry at me for a second. <laughs> I really did. I was furious. I was I was, I was going to try and cross the words Fura, as in mine Fura, and furious. I'm not entirely sure why, but let's just pretend that that didn't happen. Um... Who is going to be at Alcon? Um, Doug Walker, Matthew Buck, Matt Williams, Brentel Floss, and Sage. We isn't like I'm trying to think like is in a art and it's an anime con. Yeah, it is an anime convention. I'm trying to think who else because I know I commented and there are going to be more people there, but I can't fucking remember anything. For sort of Channel Awesome and its affiliates. Huh. I think that's it for Channel Awesome and people associated with Channel Awesome. I'm trying to... No! I just had it. I'm cutting this part out. Hold on. (laughs) Where is this... Well, Kyle Hebert is going to be there. Kyle Hebert is just the greatest. Uh, He's a voice actor. Ah, nice one. Amazing. He does so much stuff that I just love. And Little Karibo is also... Little Karibo and... A lot of Team Four Star, so. I like um, I like Lawrence. I don't know a lot of the others. Um, Matt, yeah. I know Shady. I know Shady Vox. I know One Kids. I know Noah King, uh, and I know Little Kribo. So. <laughs> By the way, I just want to talk, in terms of animation. Um, this you know again is a reasonably neat segue. We'll make it work. You'll make it work in editing. Um, <laughs> I'm putting that responsibility entirely on your shoulders. Thanks. This, this Simpsons Family Guy crossover, what the fuck? You're really mad about this. You're way more mad about it than I am. I really care, because I think it's just... The Simpsons hasn't been funny for about ten years. It was. It had a golden age between seasons three and ten, I think. Um, and even the first two seasons, you know, they might not have been that funny... But they had a certain poignancy and heart that I could appreciate. Um, it's now can I obviously... Just, can I just edit out that Alcon is actually going to be the 5th through the 8th of September? Where did you read that it was going to be in August? Let me have a look. Was it that other thing I posted? Sorry? Was it that... Never mind. I was just thinking if it was that other thing I posted. Oh, no. Sorry. You're qu- No, you're quite right. Sorry, everyone. It's... That was the Nine Worlds convention, which does also look very good, but no, two entirely different things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, The Simpsons is now on its 24th season, um, and it's not funny anymore, it's not heartfelt anymore, the characters are parodies of themselves, and it's being kept alive entirely on the basis that it is a cash cow, like they don't already have enough cash. I'm sorry, but there it is. Family Guy, you know, what a Family Guy is what it is. I think it's quite funny. Um, the idea, the idea of a crossover between the two things, between, particularly when, in the nineties, Matt Groening had a really public argument with James L. Brooks for including a character from another animated show in The Simpsons, which Matt Groening felt kind of devalued the realism of that universe. Mm-hmm. So. For him to, for him to then sell out in such a huge way, and um, for something that you know it it will be crap, it'll be awful. I I just you know I just think I hope this kills the Simpsons off for good. I've seriously had enough. And you're you're speaking. You don't hate the Simpsons. I you... love, I love seasons three to ten. Exactly, and that's speaking I... from someone who likes the Simpsons. I, I can't say I... I mean, I, Simpsons is okay from what I've seen. I just, you know... 
I think the I'm Simpsons... not a, I'm not a religious watcher of it or anything. But... See, I grew I grew up with the Simpsons, and I think it went through a golden age where I I just think it was the funniest thing on TV, just in terms of the both the gags and the character humor and the inventiveness, the comments it was able to make on our society, just everything about it and how heartfelt it was as well as how funny it was it's terrible now i think i don't think it's funny at I, all. I, I also think they should just go ahead and just cross over with you know futurama and american dad while they're at it because you know that's eventually what it's going to come to well, they might yeah. as well if it's come if, if it's come to this they clearly don't have any more respect for themselves or for the people that loved the show. Cross over with South Park while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, why the hell not? Why, why the hell not? I'm much more... Bob's Burgers? Do that too, you know? Just... Oh, goddamn Bob's Burgers. Actually, no, to be fair, I haven't I haven't seen much of it. I am prejudging Bob's Burgers. I've heard it's pretty good, but... Really? Yeah. I like anything with Kristen Schaal I can usually watch. I do like Kristen Schaal. I do. You know, whether it's good or bad, like, I can usually watch it if she's in it. She well, just makes everything, I'm... like, ten times better. <laughs> that's why I'm gonna go and see the Smurfs, too, because of John Oliver. I could, John Oliver is someone that I could listen to read the phone book, and I could certainly listen to him act gay for an hour and a half. There are worst ways, worst ways to spend your time. I just feel really bad, because I about Smurfs too because I love Britney Spears so much but she's basically doing the theme song for Smurfs too and I'm like oh god Britney she's... yeah the song is a piece of shit but, I, like. I mean she's obviously doing it for her kids so I can't get that mad at it you know no, I suppose not she she's has already... little kids and I, her kids are in the music video I think and uh I mean she's obviously doing it for her kids so I mean it's not like she's completely selling out at the moment for this, but, you know. I mean, I, I, I never saw Britney Spears as, like, I mean, I, you know, I actually quite enjoy her music, just in terms of it being kind of good to dance to and, you know, entertaining, um, but I never saw her as someone with, like, an abundance of musical integrity, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's she was, like, my very first idol, Really? Yeah, she, like, I was like, oh, she and I worship you, you know? Like, <laughs> I think her album was the first CD I ever owned. What was it about Britney Spears that you latched onto? I don't know, so it was the 90s, and everybody loved Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and the Backstreet Boys. And... Yeah, that, no, fair play, they did. They and did. NSYNC, which I, I still mourn every day that NSYNC is probably never going to get back together for anything, no, because Justin Timberlake, Timberlake just keeps getting more and more famous. <laughs> I I mean no I know what you mean these things are definitely part of my childhood they do have a special place in my heart I actually think I might have sung Hit Me Baby one more time at a talent show when I was 11 with no understanding of the kind of meaning of that song whatsoever I think every every girl that in in the present day right now is between the ages of 18 and like 23 I would say like I think every single one of them or at least 90% of them have done a talent show at some point when they were young and did a Britney Spears song did you yeah no way oh yeah when I was a kid I was like super young and I was with a bunch of other girls who, who also fall into that category I did it I did it on my own oh really uh, which I regret. I mean, I, re I partly regret it because I was crap. Although having said that, I'm sure everyone was crap at those talent shows. I I got into I got into elementary school chorus with an NSYNC song. That is so cool. <laughs> it was pretty the best, great. The best like um thing I did when I was a teenager in terms of sort of amateur performing was um I did the Wizard of Oz. I was Dorothy. Oh really. That was badass. <laughs> Even though I was caked in makeup. Oh, yeah. What you know with me at the time, though, was that when it came out, um, there was a thing in our local paper, um, the Tiverton Gazette, me being from Tiverton, um, and they had quoted me as saying, you know, in reference to the phrase, there's no place like home, the sort of famous phrase from Wizard of Oz, 
they had quoted me as saying, there's no place like Tiverton, says Fran Kilshaw, star of Tiverton Amateur Dramatics, Wizard of Oz. And I was like, I'm sorry, I never, I never said that. There is no place like Tiverton. <laughs> There's no place like it in the worst meaning possible. <laughs> precisely, precisely. But you ain't getting me on record as saying that because I didn't. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I just thought you bastards. That's the greatest. <laughs> they misquoted you. <laughs> I, it's the first. It's good practice for being misquoted when I'm a celebrity. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 16. It would have been better if you were, like, six years old or something. Yeah. Um, I'm, like, really super pissed off by it. Like, re- <laughs> to re- this day, I'm, you still are? You're like, man. Stop. I'm still, I'm still somewhat bitter. <laughs> People think you actually like the town that you came from. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> no, actually, I, I do love Tibet, and Tibetan's mad, but... Everywhere is a bit mad. Um, I think you just you're more aware of your hometown's madness because that is where you spend most of your time as a teenager. Speaking, speaking of madness, um, when I I'm gonna segue back to Pacific Rim, kind of. When I okay. went and saw Pacific Rim, I almost died, like legitimately almost. I thought I was dead. Um, so I was. There was something just about the parking lot. Uh, um. I was driving to the mall where the movie theater was and I was by myself in my car and one of the parking lots I usually park in was like really crowded and I'm like, uh, I don't like parking less parking lot anyway, you know, it's always kind of hard to get out of. So I'll just go around to the front end or, or to the, to one of the more main entrances where it says like, Oh, here's the entrance to the movie theater. And I'm like, I'll just go around to that parking lot. So I go around to that parking lot and I see some guy running on the sidewalk, and he flags me down. And I'm like, yeah, hey. And I roll down my window. And he's like, do you think you can give me a ride to uh, wherever? I forgot what he said. And oh, nice. uh, and I'm like, well, I'm actually about to park. I'm already late. I really was already late for the movie. So, <laughs> um, so I'm like, so I'm like um, no, I'm actually about to park. I'm so sorry. And then I roll up my window, and... It, this all happened in the span of, like, two seconds. I heard a police siren. I looked over to the guy. I Like, my head immediately turned to this young guy who was sweaty and was running when I found him. And yeah. he reached for my back car door and tried to open it, but it was locked. <laughs> oh. And I immediately just, like, went. And, <laughs> and then... Oh. Uh, Speeding by me was, like, two police cars. This guy was already, like, running toward the mall. So this guy was being chased by police and accosted me to get him out of there. That is off the hizzle. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually thankful because our car, our family car, is so old that, like, some of my friends, like, have a hard time, like, figuring out how to open the door. So even if my car door hadn't been locked, I feel like that guy wouldn't have been able to open it anyway. <laughs> Not when he was stressed and in a rush, but thank God for that. But I like, thank I went to the park. I went to park, and I parked pretty far away. And I'm like, well, okay, I couldn't even take the entrance. I was planning on going through anyway because police were surrounding it because that's near where the guy had run to. And, <laughs> and I'm like, well, my plan worked out perfectly. My intuition failed me again. And well. There's no way you could have... If I had just fucking said, okay, well, it's gonna be a hard time to get out of this parking lot when I'm done with the movie, but I might as well park there anyway. If I had just done that, that whole situation could have been avoided. But do you know what? It's a great story. Yeah, it's a great story to tell about almost dying. I haven't told my parents, because they might might just flip a shit. I don't want to tell them that that happened to me. (laughs) Did they not listen to um, the podcast? Huh? Do they not listen to the podcast? Oh, no. <laughs> no, neither do my parents, don't worry. Yeah. Um, I um, do want to advise you, though, because you are a bit younger than me. Don't stop for a sweaty running man in the future, because I don't want you to get murdered. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why did I stop? Because <laughs> in my head, I'm like, why am I stopping for this man? I can't take him anywhere. I don't have anything I can give him. <laughs> No, and even if you did and you could, it, 
just best not. I don't know if this dude bro has a gun. I don't know. <laughs> Long story short, I could have almost died because some dude bro decided to try to get in my car. That is nuts. But then I saw Pacific Rim and I basically forgot about everything. Yeah, fair play. Um, that's a great story. I'm glad you segued back to oh, Pacific Rim. You, you know, another way I could have avoided it is if I had fucking gone to a non-matinee showing of the movie because I was completely befuddled when I came up to get my ticket. It, it shows after 6 p.m. are considered matinee. So it's like all one ticket price. Before 6 p.m. it's like this for a kid, this for an adult. And hmm. it used to be, this is how it used to be last time I went to the movies, which was, I forgot what the last movie I saw was. It's 6.50 for a kid, 8.50 for an adult before 6 p.m. And then after 6 p.m. it's 7.50 for everybody. But now, Shoot, I did is... not know, now they had changed it to $10 after 6 p.m. <laughs> so I was, like, planning on spending exactly six seven fifty, But now the only way I can spend seven fifty is if, because they changed the prices to before 6 p.m. So now it's actually cheaper to go to one to six at, before 6 p.m. Because now it's seven fifty for an adult and not $8.50. <laughs> Great, I am offended by how cheap that is. I mean, you, in dollars, you know, but... Well, no, yeah, still. It's expensive here for a movie ticket. So now seeing a 3D movie is $13 after 6 p.m. Oh, $13, yeah, that's a bit more, that's a bit more awesome. For a 3D something. movie, if I had seen Pacific Rim in 3D, $13. Well worth it, but... It's the same over, it's funnily enough, it's the same over here to see a 3D movie as it is to see a movie in 2D. Huh. Which seems odd in hindsight, although having said that, I'm not... I like 3D. Mm -hmm. I don't love 3D. What are your thoughts? I like it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It doesn't, it doesn't kind of particularly bother me. I don't think it is... I think it's a nice extra sometimes. I don't think it is, like, the definitive way to watch a film or, like, the superior way to watch a film. Yeah. But I... I mean, there are some movies I wish I had gone... Like, I wish I had seen Pacific Rim in 3D. I wish I had seen Amazing Spider-Man in 3D, honestly. Um, there are some movies that are so good and so beautifully shot, but I don't think the 3D will enhance them in any way. I know, but, like, there were so many shots in Amazing Spider-Man that were just, like, swinging and, like, a deep swing through the city, and I'm like, oh my god, I'd love to see that 3D. <laughs> I remember when I saw Watchmen in um, at the IMAX, and... Oh, no, no, sorry, it wasn't Watchmen, it was The Dark Knight. And I can remember, you know, they, they yeah, they had these kind of beautiful sweeping shots of the city where you felt like you were flying. And I thought, you know what, like, the 3D wouldn't have made this any more spectacular. It's already amazing. Yeah, I mean, I saw The Dark Knight as well, you know. It was all right, just in 2D, you know. I, it was just fine. I mean, I don't have, I don't have a preference. I really don't. I know some people are like, really against either really against it or really for it but i just really don't care oh i don't really care either and i i think there are i think there are bigger things to concern yourself with as a film like fan. if the I think, movie is actually good yeah <laughs> i think right exactly and i think you know the the fact is is that there are a lot of movies coming out that aren't very good and i think that's the worrying thing not whether they're in 3d or not i'm just worried because that whole conversation i just had about ticket prices was just way too confusing I don't think Was so. it? Think it's just um, like it used to be more expensive to go see a movie here before 6 p.m. But now it's cheaper to go see a movie before 6 p.m., which doesn't bother me at all because I have no life anyway. So it's just like I ain't going to see a movie whenever. You do have a life. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Everyone has a life. Yeah, kind of, I guess. But I just I don't know why. I don't know why at first I was mad about it because I'm like. It doesn't, it's never mattered to me when to see a movie. It has never mattered to, except if it's like a midnight showing. But, yeah. you know, it's never mattered to me before now. And I don't know why it matters to me, because it's just like, I can go see it whenever. It does not matter. <laughs> you you forget what time of day it is about 20 minutes into your movie. It's true. I find it really weird coming out the cinema and it's still being light. I find that because I just I just when I'm in there and I'm watching the film I have no concept of time or time of day or 
I'm just in that dark room and it could be three o'clock in the morning for all I know. Mm-hmm. I really want to segue into Monsters University. You saw it? I, saw. I did. I love Monsters, Inc. I think it's a really, like, just such a sweet film. And, you know, the ending is really beautiful and touching, as, you know, I'm sure everyone knows. And, you know, the vocal performances are really good and it's really inventive and funny. And I just, and I really like the characters. I really like Mike and Sully and Boo. I just warm to them so much. Is Boo in the movie? No, Boo's not in the movie, um, because it's a prequel. Yeah, I know Um, that, but I was just like, maybe there's, like, references, and, you know. Yeah, there I mean, there are references to things in the other movies, but no, not Boo, um, which is why I hope they make a sequel to Monsters, Inc. at some point. Um, Yeah. If they do do it well, I would like to... It's a world that I enjoy inhabiting. Um, But, yeah, I... I loved Monsters University, and I kind of went in expecting it to be, you know, kind of a fun ride, but there's there's a plot in it where, like, Mike wants to be a scarer and he has to kind of t- come to terms with the fact that there, that is never going to happen. And without kind of giving too much away, I, find, I found that really moving. And there were some bits of dialogue about what that feels like to want something really badly and have to come to terms with the fact that it isn't going to happen and I was really that really really struck a chord with me and you know it's been getting kind of okay reviews um because obviously it's Pixar you know and something would have to be awful to not get a reasonable review um but I I yeah I just loved it and yeah I loved the character and it was really funny Mm -hmm. it was really Uh funny there were some great jokes in it um and yeah, again, you know, I really like John Goodman and Billy Crystal. And yeah, I just think if you're if you're a Pixar fan and you're a fan of the first movie, go and see it because you won't be disappointed. There is really a lot to like in it. I, I forget what... Oh, Pixar's next movie is going to be Planes, correct? Uh, and I don't think it's Pixar Planes. It's Pixar... Oh, it's Planes, since it's, a, it's the same universe as Cars. It just looks so. It looks so much more cheaply animated, though. That's why uh, I, I, mean, I. I mean, the little boy that I babysat yesterday, the five-year-old that I babysat yesterday, is really excited about it. Is he really? Yeah, I mean, and that's the defense I always use for the Cars movies is that. And actually, my his his mother, his, his, me and his mother were talking about this, and I'm like, I mean, of course, critics that are grown men and women who are my age that don't have children, are not going to find cars enjoyable because we are not the demographic for cars. This little five-year-old boy right here loves the shit out of cars. And that's, like, that's his, like, any little boy between the ages of two and six, like, cars is just their world, you know? And no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just funny. It's really sweet just seeing all that and... Uh, and, and, like, even the the mother I was talking with, like, she thinks Cars 2 is crap only because, like, the plots in Cars 2, she's like, if you ask um, him, we were referring to the little five-year-old, if you ask him what the plot of Cars 2 was, he wouldn't be able to tell you because the, apparently the plots in Cars 2 are super just, like, convoluted and really, like, not made for a four-year-old boy mind because there's like spies and she's like he doesn't care about spies and you know stuff like that <laughs> my the, the thing is my my thing is is i know I, th- I think that defense of it there is a real element of truth to that you know that of course you know adult of course i'm not gonna like planes but, I, I already know i'm not going to but it's no. not made for me no <laughs> what i would my kind of counter argument to that would be that I think you can make something that is for that demographic and make it really entertaining and engaging for that demographic and still make it a good film like you look at the good Disney films you look at the good Pixar films and they you know little kids love the shit out of them because you know they look amazing and the voice work is really fun but adults can then appreciate those things and also, you know, good writing and good jokes and a good story. And there's no reason 
you know, I think you're just you're selling kids short and you're selling their family short if you make something that, yeah, they can enjoy in a superficial way, but they can't they can't watch again and again and again and appreciate more and appreciate when they're adults and show their children. I mean, and, and the mother I was talking with, I mean, she likes cars. I mean, because she watches it all the time with her little boy. And, you know, yeah, I mean, she's like, I mean, it's a good lesson, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, ki- little kids, like, ra- little boys love, like, anything with race cars in it. So it's just like, ah, well, uh, <laughs> you know. If they can do better than they should. That is always my kind of argument, I guess. Mm-hmm. By the way, um, Planes isn't Pixar. It's um, it's a Disney Toon Studios release. It's not Pixar. No, it's not. That actually explains a why it looks really different. Actually. Yeah, it explains why it looks so cheap and crap. Yeah, I don't know what the next Pixar film's gonna be. I've heard it's. I is it gonna be Finding Dory? I have no idea. Uh, Finding Dory's like 2013. Let me look it up. I, for it. I heard it was gonna be 2015 before they're done with it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's have a look. Upcoming projects. The Good Dinosaur, which I've never heard of until now. I think now. they just announced that one, yeah. May 30th, 2014. And then after that, it's Finding Dory. Yeah. The good, that I, yeah. sounds cute. The Good Dinosaur. <laughs> the Good Dinosaur. It does sound cute. It does. I literally know nothing about it but the title. I don't either, but I, I've heard about the title, and I'm like, oh, that sounds cute. <laughs> It does. The Good Dinosaur, that's a nice story. Yeah. I mean, they're really, they've been going on a bit of a downward, just critically, I mean. They've but been going be, on a, a downward spiral. Even though so gonna... Brave was awesome and people didn't like it for oh, some well, reason. I don't get it. I still haven't seen Brave. I would like to. I mean, I, I really, you know, I like the idea of them doing a mother-daughter story. It is. A, it really is a mother That's why I want to take my mom to see it, you know, but... Well, I'm sure you can persuade her. Yeah. I just I mean, I just really liked it. I don't know why I liked it so much, but I really it was good. It was great. Yeah, things I mean, you know, I think I, I can probably come across as a bit snobby, but there are there are things I enjoy that critics don't, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think everyone I mean, does. I mean there are there are people I I said this people were really pissed off that like they did a survey and for weekend movies and people would have rather seen Grown Ups 2 than Pacific Rim. And I'm like, well, people like what they like, you know. I I would love if everyone went to go see Pacific Rim because that means that genre can get more popular. And it's such a good genre, that kaiju kind of, you know, stuff like that. And it proves that Guillermo del Toro proved that you can make a movie about giant robots and have it not be crap, like Michael Bay, you know? And Michael Bay has just completely ruined that genre, and I hope Guillermo del Toro can bring it back into a good light. Well, you know what? It's been getting good reviews, and everyone seems to really like it from what I've uh, seen. And I'm like, well, people like what they like. Comedy's subjective. Let them go see Grown Ups 2, whatever, you know? I think I admire you, Grimmer. I admire your attitude, because I think, you know, there is way too much time wasted actually on worrying about what other people are going to go see for their own personal lives you know other people like you like what you like let them like what they like as long as they don't like things that are racist and homophobic and sexist just like i like just go see grown up i don't give a fuck you know i don't give a crap you know and, and at least like at least give money to the good actors that are in that movie like like Kevin James, I think is actually like a pretty likable guy. He seems like one. Like Kevin James yeah. seems like a pretty good guy. He's just in crap <laughs> movies all the time. He picks awful, awful. But what's I think what the the issue I have with Kevin James is just that he picks so many good movies, uh, so many bad movies. Sorry, it's just like bad movie what's after bad. for him is bad. everything that's written for him is awful. Yeah, yeah. Just because he's a big guy, and I'm like, just do a good movie. Yeah, I mean, he needs to just—he needs to find somebody who can see kind of what he has to offer and be willing to put him in a good project. Sucks, because I see him in the interviews and he seems like such a nice guy, and I'm like, I feel so bad for you. I really do. Have you seen Punch Drunk Love? No. See, that is Adam Sandler's like one good movie I've heard. 
and it's by a director that I really like. Um, oh, and Chris Chris Rock is also in that movie, and I love Chris Rock. I love him I so love much. I adore Chris Rock. Chris Rock is another person. Yeah, I could listen to him read the phone book. I just think he's great. I think and Chris Chris Rock's stand up, like I have cried tears of oh yeah yeah just listening to his stand up. No, I I uh, concur wholeheartedly. Yeah. No. I, I think he's a very, very smart bloke. There's actually, um, I mean, it's been around for a while. Probably a lot of you guys have seen it. Um, there's a really great documentary with like Ricky Gervais, Jerry Seinfeld, Louis C.K. and Chris Rock um, called Talking Funny, um, where they just sit around, sit around and kind of discuss comedy and discuss stand up, um, which is really worth watching. It's very interesting. Yeah. He has. Um... I think it's, uh, God, what is the comedy special he has? I think it's, um, I think it's Never Scared or something like that. And that's, like, one of the best stand-up things he's ever done. It's really, really great. And, um, I think that show, he, he has, he had a show, um, for a few years called Everybody Hates Chris. And it's basically, like, it's him, uh, I, I think it's, like, uh, he narrates himself as a child, like his childhood experiences growing up the oldest of three kids and living oh, in wait. living in Brooklyn yes. and you know. How hilarious is it like when that show came out, did you have a friend called Chris? No. Because we did, and really? I'm sure a lot of people did, and there is nothing funnier, or there was nothing funnier at the time, than standing in front of those big billboards with your friend Chris and taking a photo. Wow. <laughs> and milking the whole everybody hates Chris thing when you have a friend called Chris is like just a gold mine. Yeah. I would imagine so. Yeah, seriously. But yeah, like, like that show was good. I thought it was it, good, you know. I, it's a great show, yeah. It just happens to have quite a like unfortunate title for anyone called Chris. Yeah. A bit like Doug with Doug. Yeah, basically. Um, Pretty much. I think, I mean, like, there's some... Have you heard... That movie Turbo, okay? That looks like a piece of crap. But Ryan Reynolds is a snail. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's, That's the only cr- thing I can say in an argument to people who say it's crap. I'm just like, but Ryan Reynolds is a snail. Yeah, well then to you, I say John Oliver is Vanity Smurf. Yeah. You're- is invalid. I mean, but uh, <laughs> Rose, I talked to Rose about Turbo. I mentioned it to her and she's like, do not talk about Turbo. Do not talk about it. And I'm like, but Ryan Reynolds is a snail. <laughs> well, she's a, she's an anim- animation kind of guru, yeah. Rose, isn't she? Yeah. And um, she does actually, for anyone listening, she does a really, really wonderful online comic called, um, what's it called? Pancakes and Space Men or Spaceships yes, yes, or something. Yes. Yeah, it's really funny. Really, really funny. Like, definitely worth checking out. Um, That's my plug for the day. Um, We'll talk about Comic-Con, I guess, even though um, it's it's going to be done by the time this comes out, I think. Um, Well, that's right. People will still be bitter enough that they'll kind of semi want to hear about it to feed their bitterness. Well, unless uh, unless the people that are at Comic-Con, you know. Yeah. For all the people Unless those are, people are at Comic Con. I well, for any of you that are, you can fuck off. Yeah, really. You can fuck right off. Just stop. And, uh, but Seriously, for Comic Con, you're doing all the grunt work. What's already happened? The Doctor Who panel happened, I think. The Sherlock panel. Sherlock um, panel happened. Legend of Korra panel happened. Game of Thrones panel happened. South Park Stick of Truth was a couple of nights ago. Um. With uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Um, I think the Simpsons and Family Guy had a couple of panels, but fuck them. <laughs> fuck them right in the ear. You're uh, really I'm, bitter about that. I'm so pissed off. I'm so, I'm so, I just, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I think it's, I just think it's so, so terrible. But anyway, we've discussed that. Um, was there a Supernatural panel? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Certainly. I know. Oh, actually, no, no, for a fact, there was a supernatural panel because John Barrowman um, is in a lot of pictures swooning over Misha Collins. Really? 
which I find delightful. Like, today, today's Saturday for us. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're having. Let's see. I'm looking through. Uh, My Little Pony had a panel at 10. Oh, sweet. Uh, Sorry, I just have to interrupt you. Did you say, did you just say to me, today's Saturday for us? For us, yeah. Right now. Oh, I thought you meant Saturdays for us, as in you thought that it wasn't Saturday in England. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because that would I'm not dumb. Okay. (laughs) Really fucking stupid. Uh, Beats Motel had a panel today. Machinima had a panel today. Once Upon a Time. Um, I, I know I know a lot of people that are into Once Upon a Time. Yeah, I know a couple of people that are into it. I mean, oh, they had that. Like... They had the Agents of Shield panel yesterday. Sorry. They had the Agents of Shield panel yesterday. Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited about Agents of Shield. Uh, they showed the first episode to the Comic Con people yesterday, or they showed it. To everybody yesterday. <laughs> bastards. Fucking bastards. I'm I'm really excited about about Agents of Shield. Um and I'm really excited about Sherlock season three. Um you very kindly um sent me a BuzzFeed link pretty much filling me in on what I missed from the Sherlock panel. Mm-hmm. Um there is going to be I'm very excited because there is going to be an adaptation of the Sherlock Holmes novel Sign of the Four which is the one that I've just read, um, in which Watson, I don't want to give too much away, this is a spoiler, but Watson falls in love, um, which is kind of the emotional beating heart of the book, um, and I imagine will be even more so in the series, and it's it's great, it's really sweet and really tender, and I've got to say I'm as excited about that as I am about learning how Sherlock survived the fall, um, in the writing back fall. Uh, so, yeah, I'm... Uh, that that is the panel that I would have liked to have seen. Mm. I think. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Futurama has a panel today. Futurama. Futurama has a panel today. Place in my heart. Um. Oh, the first day they had the X Files 20th anniversary panel. Oh fuck. Me. And David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson were taking pictures with each other oh. everywhere. <laughs> Oh, they God. were hugging and oh, it was good. <laughs> I can't even deal. I'm only on season four. I'm going through the X Files so slowly. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm watching it with my cousin Dan, but he lives in Devon, so I can only watch it like when I'm back there. Uh huh. And I really want to finish watching it with him. I want to finish what I've started. Oh God, there's so much going on. The My Little Panel I would have liked to have seen because. I really liked Equestria Girls. I don't even care. You liked it? I, I did like I, it. I, like, skimmed through it. And I'm like, this is too creepy. I can't watch this. Oh, <laughs> this yeah. looks too Get- weird. Yeah. The, no, they, they they did look weird. But when you're used to it... Well, when I got used to it, I was fine. But they did look weird. They did look weird. And they were too skinny, which is obviously a problem. Um, so, also today... They're going to have a big panel about the Telltale Walking Dead game. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I want to go to that. Robert Let's Kirkman, who writes the comics, is going to be there. And I'm like, oh. I mean, it just sounds like the greatest place in the world. Yeah. Doesn't it? You know, we, there's no point in pretending anymore. I don't know when the Venture Brothers panel is. I think it's tomorrow. Um, or just, maybe, maybe today. They're having, they're having a huge Adult Swim panel with just a lot of the small shows like they're all going to be in one panel like squidbillies and super jail which i love super jail and uh metalocalypse and you know all these. my question is though it just sounds so kind of dense like a real kind of embarrassment of riches you would inevitably have to miss things that you liked in favor of like you have oh, to make yes. <laughs> and i think i'd find that hard yeah, that's that's what you have to face with every convention, basically. I found that out at MacFest the hard way. Yeah. I mean, I knew that going in, but I'm like, man, when you're actually when it's actually happening to you, you're like, shit. <laughs> it's, hard. it's hard. I mean, I, I remember I had that at the SFX um, weekend, although less so because it is a smaller con. Feel free, uh, feel uh, feel free to experience that when you go to Alcon, and there's gonna be something you would really like to see at the same time that Doug Walker has a panel. 
Well, it's an anime con, so I'm not sure there's going to be much for me there, which is why... Unless you start watching anime before then, which I've told you to do. Mm, I could, couldn't I? I... I... I, do, I just don't want you to make a fool of yourself where you're like, who wants that costume? And it's like, obviously, this really huge anime character that everybody and their mother knows. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a life, yeah. even though I really don't. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can still have a life in, like, anime, I think. Yeah, that's very true. I, I mean, I, I kind of I, do. <laughs> I mean, I think I've just been put off by anime ever since... The first thing that I saw was Howl's Moving Castle, and I thought it was really dull. Howl's Moving Castle is one of the duller Miyazaki films. I know people who, like, swear by Howl's Moving Castle, though. And it is a beautiful film, and I do like it. I Personally, I like it, but I think critically, it is, like, one of the duller Miyazaki films. Definitely Spirited Away is the best one. Like, that's just critically... It, it, Spirited Away is, like, just everyone's go-to for a Miyazaki film. Spirited Away and Princess Princess Mononoke. They just, I don't know, and I'm probably just being really biased, but they just, they just don't seem like my color. They seem very kind of slow moving, which again, Sp- Spirited just- Spirited Away is definitely not. Um, mm. You have to. It's not a bad thing. I'm just not sure it's for me. I like, in terms of animation, I like my animation quite frenetic and fast moving and. Uh, th- that's just, I guess, the kind of thing that I enjoy watching or I find visually interesting. Or Whereas I, I think my problem with Howl's Moving Castle was that it was very slow moving, but I didn't think it filled all that space with good dialogue or character work. I really did think it was just all style and no substance. Spirited Away is... Just, just watch Spirited Away. That's all I can tell you is just watch Spirited Away. Watch Spirited Away because I've heard great things and I've heard great things about um, Spirited Away Prince. and Princess uh, Mononoke and even even something that you know something like Ponyo or My Neighbor Totoro, which are uh, movies that personally I love but are kind of um, not not dull but like people think they're like a little dumb. But no, I like the look of Ponyo. I thought Ponyo looked very sweet. Ponyo, has- Ponyo's a good film. I love Ponyo a lot. And I like My Neighbor Totoro. My Neighbor Totoro is probably my favorite out of uh, Miyazaki films. So. It's over, over. I mean, yeah, I I don't want to be put off by anime. Um, you know, one, because so many people I know love it and I want to be able to share that with them. And two, because I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm sure that when I watch one that speaks to me, I'll be hooked. It's just a case of like, you know, when people tell you and tell you to do something and the more they tell you to, the more reluctant you are to. Like Game of Thrones. Well, it's, <laughs> like it's, me and Game of Thrones and you, me telling you to watch Game of Thrones. Expectations. I think that's the thing. But I mean, I would, if, the thing is, if I went to Alcon, I would be going to Alcon entirely for the purposes of meeting Doug and, you know, Brentel Floss and Matthew and all those guys. And I'm just not sure that's worth 85 quid. I mean, well, it might be. It, bitch, it might be. Um, I don't know. But, uh... Excuse you? Excuse you. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I'm saying it wrong. Excuse you is your go-to phrase. A little bit, yeah. I don't know. But, uh... If I could, if you could just watch, just watch Spirited Away before you go, and you might feel a little more liberated. <laughs> okay, I will. I mean, it is just a case. Of, genuinely, it's a case of finding the money. Really? I would love nothing more than to go to every con in the book. But I think actually, my best port of call would be to save up for Magfest. Magfest. Magfest is going to be so sweet. We're going to party the fuck out of Magfest. Yeah, it'll be pretty good, if I can go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if last year was just going to be a one-time thing. I have no idea. <laughs> I Something tells me it's not going to be. I, I don't know. Making Call me crazy. It, making it up here was such a... I don't know if I could do another 14-hour train ride, and then another 14-hour train ride three days oh. later. 14 hours, that's nuts. I don't know if I could do that anymore. Again, what? at all. Could you fly? Huh? Could you fly? No. 
I mean, it's expensive too, and it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> so you can get quite cheap flights over here. Like flying, for instance, from here to Scotland would not be particularly expensive. And I can't imagine, you know, although having said that, America is huge. Mm-hmm. America is off the charts huge. America's pretty big. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I say that as someone who just wants to go everywhere, but can't. Yeah, well, I know that feel. I know that feel, bro. Uh, um, I don't really have anything else to add unless you do. I've kind of talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, Comic Con. Oh, the Steam. We want to talk about Steam sale because you can't buy oh, anything. Haha. Okay. <laughs> Take it away. Take yeah. it away. Bruce. You can't. If you did have money, what games would you buy on the Steam sale? Because I okay. If I, if I did have money, um, I would buy. Uh oh, I would buy the one that everyone's been talking about, The Last of Us, and I would buy the. Prequel. Well, that's not for PC. That's PS3 exclusive. You'd have to buy a PlayStation 3. You'd have okay. to spend four hundred dollars on a PlayStation 3 before you could play The Last of Us. Before you could buy a sixty dollar game. <laughs> No, 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 no. That would be... Although I'm glad you told me, because had I decided to buy The Last of Us, I would have been sorely disappointed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough PC games games to say. Well, Walking... You said you wanted The Walking Dead. You said you were sad you wouldn't have The Walking cool. Dead. The Walking That's Dead was on sale for the cheapest I've ever seen it. It was $6.24 US. Yeah, like, I mean, it's driving me crazy. Like, there's a cheap DVD store in town. Um... And I go in there all the time. And usually I would buy a DVD for £5 and be able to square that with myself very, very easily. Mm -hmm. It's having to be so boring with money at the moment. You have no idea. It's fucking depressing. I already bought three games that were all under $5. Um, They were all under $4. Um, So what what can you recommend? Huh? What can you recommend to our audience? Uh, Well, the ones I bought... I bought Surgeon Simulator 2013, which was on sale for four dollars and something cents. I can't remember. Might have been like four dollars and twenty four cents, or or three. Do- I don't remember. It was something like that, or three something. I don't know. Three ninety nine. That's what it was. And uh, hmm. I just remembered it was like three ninety nine. Um, it- Surgeon Simulator is definitely uh, harder than I thought it would be, <laughs> but it's so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> performing surgery i mean the clue is in the title yeah if you want uh how frustrating it is and it's what inspired me to get the game watch uh uh achievement hunter did a rage quit with uh a surgeon they did like three surgeon simulator videos michael and gavin did and it's they're playing it together so it's like one of them has the mouse and then one of them does moves the finger keys and it's probably the best piece of anything on youtube ever um, I'd just like to say for anyone out there that isn't a gamer, none of this means that you can or that you should let Greer perform surgery. Yeah, no, I couldn't. Um, I've already killed just like five guys in Surgery Simulator. Um, She's already when she will kill again. <laughs> um, I got To the Moon, which is an indie little game with lots of emotions, and oh. which I told I- you about. I've told you about that game. You have told me about that. There's another one really similar to that that I've heard very interesting things about called The Journey. You mean Journey or just or The Journey? No, maybe just Journey. Journey, that's for PlayStation. Um, and it's also very... It, it, I haven't played it yet because it's expensive. I've heard it's very, heard it's very simple. I've heard it's... it's There's like simple. no dialogue and it's very... yeah. But it's, I've heard it's very kind of beautiful. It's also very expensive, which is why I can't buy it on the PlayStation Network. Um, Fair enough. And I also bought uh, McPixel, which is... I can't even begin to explain McPixel to anybody. I don't know how to explain... What's it about? I just asked you to explain it, and you obviously I can't. I can't explain it. I honestly can't. But I oh. got it for 99 cents. <laughs> This is interesting. Um, sorry, I just came across an interesting little news story. Breaking news. Breaking news. Pope's bank cleanup man found stuck in a lift, that's an elevator, with a rent boy. 
As the man charged with cleaning out the stables at the scandal-struck Vatican Bank, Monsignor Batista Rica will need Machiavellian cunning, good fortune and a whiter-than-white record to have even a fighting chance. But Pope Francis's new banker appears to possess none of these attributes after it was reported yesterday that he was found stuck in a lift with a rent boy. Huh. That's cheered me up great <laughs> that's wonderful news do you know the pope drived uh, he, he drives around like a ford focus or something like that he doesn't he doesn't want any extravagances he's very like the new pope i mean you know oh the new pope he's like he doesn't yeah. want any extravagances he's actually he, i've actually heard he's like super like modest and drives around a ford focus oh uh, yeah i've heard i've heard he's nicer and perhaps has a sort of sliver of integrity, unlike the others. Um, he does still live in a big gold encrusted palace or something to that effect. Oh, hey. Um, so how does it feel being uh, liberated over in the UK right now? Liberated? Because the gay marriage thing. That is great news. That is great news. I, I'm delighted. I mean, it's, you know, it's... <laughs> It's just really. Were there like were there like parades in the street and shit like outside your window like just Tardises <laughs> flying around all all a flutter. Everyone watching Red Dwarf in um in their yacht. Everyone the writing text. Red Dwarf fan fiction. Everyone writing Red Dwarf slash um I no well we've just had Pride anyway at least Pride London um but no suffice to say there was a great deal of celebrating um because we had only had civil partnerships up until very recently so it's wonderful news mm -hmm. it's wonderful i mean i yeah there's nothing more i can add to it it's just great and i i love how this is this is all happening while uh kate middleton is trying to have her baby which has she hasn't had it yet correct no she hasn't although we know now what its main title gonna is gonna be it's gonna be either a prince or a princess of cambridge okay not the Prince or Princess of Cambridge, yeah. just Princess or Prince of Cambridge. Yeah, as of uh, noon on Saturday, uh, Kate Middleton still has not had her baby. <laughs> no, when is she due or he due? She's, like, past due date. Really? Yeah, she's, like, about a week past... She, like, I heard she was going to the hospital, like, almost a week ago. I really want her to give it an awful name. I want her to call it, like... Just like Malcolm or Wilf or something, just like a horrible lot of. I old mass. don't want it to look like Prince Charles. No, no, that would be terrible. No, hopefully it'll be a Middleton, not a Windsor. Yeah. Um, and wouldn't it be great if it was gay? Maybe. Probably. How apt. Uh, but no, they said she was supposed to be due like yesterday or something. Huh. And well, they've they've already like they've moved from London or they moved from London to somewhere like where her family lives or something like that and some actually can I just say how great would it be if it was black? <laughs> You've said that already and you really just... you really want it to be black. I know, and I'm going to milk this joke. Because <laughs> there are those of you that may not have heard it, and it's a very, very funny joke. I've, I've always I'm thought, gonna... like, how awkward would it be for that British doctor to, like... like oh, hey, it's black. <laughs> no, about just in general, like, the prin or the Duchess of Cambridge is giving birth. Here's her vagina. <laughs> Here is the royal vagina. The royal vagina. Well, not the royal vagina. A royal vagina. True. Not the royal vagina. The one as and much only as we don't want to think about it, they're still like you know Camilla and the Queen. You know. Oh well, that's an image that I'm not <laughs> going to be able to get out of my head. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Now I'm sure by comparison, Kate Middleton's royal vagina is lovely. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it's but, a great. But vagina. I've always thought about like yeah. how have those like. The, those gynecologist meetings gone and like how weird is that doctor gonna feel and 
I, I just, like, am baffled. Like, I want to know what's going through that doctor's brain. Well, I suppose he's a professional. And also, I can imagine they have a royal doctor or a few royal doctors. Royal doctor. <laughs> yeah, that are just, you know, that, uh, that, you know, do these things for the wealthy, for the rich and famous. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's probably used to it. He's probably seen Angelina Jolie's vagina. Yeah. God willing. Well, I mean, has she truly given birth to any of her children? They're all adopted, aren't they? No, but women have to see gynecologists for other reasons. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, that... all her kids are adopted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they are. By the way, I was really saddened to hear... What, didn't Angelina Jolie have cancer or something? And... She, that was a while ago. She had to have a double uh, mastectomy because... There was, like, can't, there was a risk of cancer, so she had to have him removed. Which is actually what happened to, um, Juliana Rancic, who is a slayer. She, she's on the E! Network over here, um, and she's super, like, skinny and, like, really bony, but she's a really nice woman, I've heard, and, uh, she had to also have a double mastectomy because I think the cancer was already there. And well, and giving Angelina Jolie a hard time for having a mastectomy can go and fuck Yeah, themselves. I know. Everyone's like, man, Brad Pitt's out of luck now. And I'm like, I'm sure Brad Pitt is not that shallow. I no, am, I, I am. He's not sure. You know, he's been with this woman for a few years now. I'm sure he loves her. I am, who she I am very, I'm confident, 100% guaranteed that Brad Pitt does not give one fuck. No, I'm sure he doesn't. I think, you know, they probably got bigger things to worry about. I mean, like, a, like, you can't get by in Hollywood, like, as long as he has been and be a douchebag. Like, he yeah. has to be, like, a nice stand-up guy. And obvious, and he, like, of course, like, he probably does not give a crap about what she looks like. No. I mean, I think there are people in Hollywood that behave badly in our... De- well, I mean, if he was you know- that much of a pig... Oh no! I'm you know, sure he's he wouldn't not. be able to get by in Hollywood, and be like this likable, you know, guy that everybody says he is. You know, up there with like George Clooney, likable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think, you know, there are great actors that have lasted that are kind of. I mean, I'm not saying Brad Pitt's one of them, but I'm saying it is possible to be a diva and succeed in Hollywood. I mean, well, yeah. you look at something like um Kanye West. Oh, well, even more so. I was thinking um. Dustin Hoffman, when he was young, was notoriously difficult. To work with? I think, yeah, I think he was. I think he was a real diva. He's mellowed out a lot. Actually, one thing I want to plug, there is a really beautiful interview with him talking about Tootsie, um, where he talks about what it was like to play a woman that wasn't necessarily kind of conventionally attractive and how that made him feel and how that kind of opened his eyes. And yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but it is a brilliant interview and I suggest you all go and look it up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. We got to wrap up in a minute. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I don't have anything else to add. Yeah. We'll end it on, on that. And uh, Pacific Rim, just go fucking see, leave right now. Turn this off. I should have said that at the beginning. Leave, go turn this off. Go watch Pacific Rim. Go watch Pacific Rim. Don't listen to this. Go and watch Pacific Rim. Yeah, you'll. It's. I, I assure you that you won't miss anything by going to see Pacific Rim <laughs> instead of this. And when that Simpsons Family Guy crossover comes out, don't watch it. Just watch Pacific Rim again. Or us. Because time it'll be out on DVD. Yeah. And on that note, I bid you farewell. Yep. It's time to go. Time to go. You want to sing a song? Yes. Sing a song. Okay. Hang on. Him. I dreamed a dream in time gone by when hopes were high and life worth living. I meant like a goodbye song, but like... (laughs) Okay. You can change the lyrics Uh, up. Um... Oh, I know. Uh, so long, farewell, I'll be the same goodbye. I was hoping for something original, but okay, that'll do. Okay, no, 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 hang on, I can come up with something original. I can come up with something original. Um, 
um, God, normally I'm really good at making up songs. Let's <laughs> just go. Now we're just fucking around. We really are. But don't cut this. This is solid gold. I won't. <laughs>